the great benefit for me in calling out to the universe after I recognized I had really done whatever I knew to do and still there was this force of suffering that was alive in me. Stop trying to escape. Stop trying to be somebody. Stop trying to get away. Stop trying to get something. Stop trying to keep something away. It actually means be still. But the mind here is be still and corrupts it into a meditation practice. As valuable as meditation practices are, and they are extremely valuable. But that's not what this is. It's not a practice. It's a moment of the deepest inquiry. into the mechanism that's running the show. And in order to inquire into that mechanism, there has to be a willingness for the show to stop. And that's rare, or has been rare. It needn't be rare, but it has been rare. Because we have relied on the show to give us what it is we think we want. You may still want more, but you've gotten enough to know it's hollow. And that's extraordinary. To inquire really deeply into the lie, into the truth that is under the lie. It's under each lie. The truth is alive. It really hasn't gone anywhere. Under all of that is this depth of seriousness. What is your life about? And as a human being already, there is a privilege in the developed brain and the capacity to reflect and remember and play back and see moments of choice, moments of lying, moments of truth, and inquire deeper to see and experience the motivation. And it's your time to discover that. And it's your choice. And it's your choice to give everything to that discovery or keep some back or trivialize it or say yes or say maybe. It's all, it's all your choice. It's choiceless that it has arisen in you. That somehow you and not your neighbor or your sister or your brother or whoever Somehow it arose in you. It called you somehow, whether you wanted it to or didn't want it to, whether you thought it was craziness or whether you thought it was enlightenment. It's 
a mystery. Maybe it's random. My teacher, Papaji, said it's just good luck, that's all. It's good luck. It just doesn't feel good for most of your life. Because <laughs> it's not normal. It doesn't look like what you thought good luck would look like. You thought it would go away <laughs> if you fed it enough stuff or accomplishments or successes or self-esteem. It, it won't go away until you meet it all the way. And so my role in your life is absolutely not to make you more comfortable in escaping your good luck, but to assist you in diving into it until you drown in it. Until you just are the luck itself. It's all about that. For being normal, ordinary, for being extraordinary with Shakti, it's all about that. All of it. Nothing excluded. We're happy in our relationships, we're sad in our relationships, it's all about that. Successful, failing, all about that. Everything is a vehicle. Everything can be turned away from. That's where free will comes in, and free willingness. And mostly we've used our free will to turn into safety and protection because it is so huge to recognize that we are nothing. <laughs> really huge. I mean, it sounds good until you get close to it. And then it's like, oh no, really? Really nothing. And the mind immediately equates that with non-existence. It's not a correct equation, but that's what, that's what the mind does, of course. Nothing equals non-existence. If I am nothing, if I'm not somebody, that therefore means I do not exist. The truth is, what doesn't exist is who you think you are. doesn't exist. It's all a lie. The good parts and the bad parts. And who you think everybody else is, too. It's all made up. It's the power of imagination. And it's wondrous in its own right, but regarding the truth of the matter. It doesn't in reality exist. And because of our identification with who we think we are, we assume if that doesn't exist, then I doesn't exist. But I is in fact existence. That all of the stories and the forms and the made-upness appear and disappear in. And so when the form of you disappears, I remains. <laughs>